Happy Wednesday, everybody. Hope you're doing well and surviving being at home and virtual school with the children and finding out the new norms at your house. And uh, we're praying for you, Jonathan and I. We miss you guys. We miss being with you in worship. Uh, but we're thankful for technology and opportunity to have these times of singing and Bible study. And so we just want to pray for us as we begin. And Jonathan's going to lead us. And then I want us to look through at, at Psalms chapter 23. Uh, familiar psalms, but just kind of want to read through it together this uh, afternoon. And so if you have your Bible, go ahead and turn to Psalms 23. I'll pray, and then Jonathan will lead us, and then I'll come back. God, thank you for today. Uh, thank you for the beautiful weather outside. We're grateful for uh, your word. We're thankful for your faithfulness in our lives. God, we see your mercy and your love and your grace just poured out to us every day, and we're grateful for that. I'm thankful for this time here for those who are watching at home and maybe at work on lunch break or wherever they are. I just, I just pray these minutes will be a time of encouragement to them, that you will um, just bless them during these moments through your, the singing and the reading and preaching of your word. I love you. I thank you for who you are. We're grateful for Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. All right. Number 333, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Here we go. What a fellowship, what a joy to find leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning. I know whom I have believed.
so much that when we put our faith and trust in you, that we know that you keep us secure. Lord, it's a promise. We sang literally your word right out of Timothy. And Lord, we know from other places in your word that, Lord, when we put our faith and trust in you, that we are sealed forever by your Holy Spirit. And we can trust that you will keep your word. Thank you. And lead us as we continue. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Jonathan. I appreciate that time together. All right. Psalms chapter 23. Uh, Maybe you're on your lunch break, or maybe you're uh, on break with your kids during school, so I want to keep this short and sweet, but I just want to share with you from Psalms chapter 23, and I want you to see a few things uh, within the text here um, about the Lord being our shepherd. So Psalms 23 is a familiar passage of Scripture for many people, uh, but I just want you to see four aspects of this uh, in the text here when it comes to God as our shepherd. The first thing I want you to see is that the shepherd is personal. The shepherd is personal. Notice verse 1. The Lord is whose shepherd? It's my shepherd. There's this unique relationship between sheep and a shepherd. And God is our shepherd. He takes care of us. He is this intimate relationship with God. One of the things I love in the New Testament is just a reminder that we can enter into the presence of God in His holy presence in relationship with Him. That He is not some distant far off God who is not involved in our day-to-day lives or not a part of us and and, and unable to enter into His presence. But but our shepherd, God, our Father, is personal in relationship with Him. And as a result of that, as this personal shepherd, it flows out some aspects of that within the text. So the Lord is my shepherd. It's this personal shepherd. The second thing I want you to see is that the shepherd is our provider. Go to the text and notice verse, uh, the end of verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I have what I need. What a great word, need. I ha- God knows what my needs are. We studied this a few weeks ago. And the Lord's my shepherd, and He knows my needs. The problem is, I think sometimes I read this text, and maybe you do too, and we think that the Lord is my shepherd. I have what I want. And I'm a professional wanter. You're a professional wanter. We, we want things. We want uh, activities. We want uh, to accumulate stuff within our lives. But the psalmist says, no, our personal shepherd is our provider. I have what I need. But notice what the shepherd does for you and I. Verse 2, he lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He renews my life. He leads me along the right paths. So God is, is active involved in our lives. He's leading us. He's guiding us. He's directing us. He's allowing us, notice just within the text, to lie down in green pastures. This, this comfort and, and no worry or concern or fear. I'm, I'm lying down in the green pastures. He leads me beside, I love this, quiet waters. Now they're not roaring, loud, out of control waves, but quiet, still waters, renewing my life and leading me along the right paths. But I want you to notice two things within this text, and God is our provider. First, notice why he does this. It's at the end of verse 3, is it not? He leads me, he renews my life, he leads me along the right paths. Circle this, for his name's sake. God is blessing us and providing for us and taking care of us As a return, we're to praise Him and give Him glory and give Him honor and worship and celebrate in who God is. So God is our provider. He's meeting our needs according to His will. Now, I know I mentioned grammar on Sunday, but I want to do it again because I think it's incredibly important. But Did you notice the pronouns? In the first three verses of Psalms chapter 23, the psalmist is talking about God. God is. He is. He lets. He leads. He renews. He uh, takes care in having what I need. So the psalmist in these few verses, we're talking about God. And that happens in your life and my life. As God is blessing and providing and taking care of us, we, we talk about God and His faithfulness and His generosity and His mercy and His love. We talk to other people about God. But notice the pronouns shift in verses 4 and 5, and he talks to God. So the shepherd is our personal shepherd. He is a shepherd who provides. And then the good shepherd is, our, is present with 
us and protector. Notice what he says in verse 4. Even when I go through the darkest valley, I fear no danger, for here it is, you are with me. Notice this subtle shift that the psalmist goes from talking about God. He does this, he does this, and he does this. And now he pivots to talking to God. In the midst of a dark valley, in the midst of potential danger, in the midst of potential fear, the, 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 the psalmist then shifts and says to the good shepherd, you are with me. I don't know about you in your life, but I've seen this happen in, in my life. When, when things are good and, and blessings and lying beside still waters and meeting our needs and uh, having to lie down in green pastures, we, 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 talk to, we talk about God, we share about God, but when things become difficult and hard, when there's, when there's doctor tests waiting, when there's cancer treatment that needs to take place, when there's a potential loss of job, when there's caring for children or ailing parents, when there's these difficult, hard moments in our lives, don't we pivot to talking to God. God, I need you during this moment. God, I need you to meet this need. God, I need you to walk with me through this. And so the psalmist here is shifting and he's saying, listen, God, I, I'm going to fear no, no evil. Why? Because you are with me. You are present with me me in the midst of these times. And I know this may seem somewhat redundant over the last few weeks, but I just think it's just a good reminder for you and I that our good shepherd is with us. Like he's with you. Maybe you're sitting in your car right now and you maybe feel alone. Well, your good shepherd is with you. M maybe you haven't been able to get out of your house and you don't have family at home. And maybe you're beginning to really feel lonely. I just want to remind you, as you watch this, that the Good Shepherd is with you. He's there with you. I remember the old song, He Walks With Me and Talks With Me. He's with you. But not just present, but He's our protector. For your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Comfort, call me. Then keep going. Verse 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, and you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Again, talking to God. God, you, your, rat, your rod, your staff, they comfort me. You, you prepare a table in the presence of my enemies. You, you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. I just want to be an encouragement to you as you watch this, maybe for you, you've noticed in the last few weeks in the midst of what we're going through, that you've noticed that you've kind of talked less about God and you've talked more to God. I have. I don't know about you, but this has really caused a, a deepening in prayer life within my own heart. Um, there are concerns that I have. There are concerns that I have with my family, with my kids, with our faith family, with our staff, with our leaders within our church. And I, I found myself in the midst of these moments talking more to God and saying, God, would you please watch over and care for my wife and children in a deeper level? God, would you please watch over and care for our staff? Would you please watch over and care and protect our lay leaders and Sunday school teachers and deacons? Would you, would you watch over and care for those people who are within our fellowship, who are lonely and scared and afraid? Just this morning, I heard from church people who are facing furloughs at the hospital, who are wondering if they're even going to have a job by the end of this week. And there's a deep-seated care and concern and heartache and pain in the midst of this. But God, you are with me. You protect me. You prepare a table in the presence of my enemies for me. My cup overflows. And then finally, the good shepherd is permanent. Notice what he says in verse 6. Only goodness and faithful love. That's the Hebrew word kesed. Only goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord as long as I live. Permanent. God, in my life, all, all goodness and your faithful love, your kesed will pursue after me 
will watch over me and care for me in, in, in all the days of my life. And then there will come a day I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. The Lord is our good shepherd. He's personal. He's my shepherd. He's provider. He's meeting our needs. He's present. I, he is with me. He's our protector, preparing tables in the presence of our enemies. And he's permanent. God's not going to leave you or forsake you. God's going to walk right with you. He's going to encourage you. He's going to support you. And he's going to love you. And he's going to continue to be faithful to you in your life, in your pursuit of him. So this day, I want to encourage you to cling tight to the good shepherd. And may your life reflect a dependence and reliance upon him in your life during these days. I love you, and I want you to know that I miss you. I miss our Wednesday crowd at lunch. I miss seeing all of you guys. I miss worship on Sunday mornings. I miss being with you guys. And I just want you to know I'm praying for you. And if you need anything, let us know. Let this office know, and Jonathan and I will be able to help you and care for you in any way. We love you, and I just want to pray for you as we close. Um, Father, thank you for uh, this time here. Thankful for the Psalm 23 and what it means to so many people's lives. God, we notice in our lives where we, we often talk about you in the good times when, when blessings and, and richness and greatness and provisions are, are abundant and everywhere in our lives. And then when we begin to go through difficult times, we, we kind of shift and talk to you. And so this morning or this afternoon, Father, I just pray that, that we would be reminded <clears throat> that you are present with us and that you are permanent and you are our protector. So I pray this morning specifically for the ones who's watching this who are in desperate need of provisions. They're, they're really figuring out how they're going to make ends meet by the end of the week. Loss of jobs, kids to take care of, parents to care for, a home to maintain. So I pray this morning for those who are concerned and worried, God, that you would bless them and take care of them and watch over them. I'm thankful for you.